Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we are celebrating Holy Communion today. Please know that no matter where you are in your life or faith journey, you are welcome to participate in Holy Communion. The gift of God's grace received in the sacrament is free for all who participate. Uh, a few announcements before we begin. Uh, sign up to share your musical gifts with us during the summer by providing special music on a Sunday during worship. Sign up on a kiosk out in an archive. Uh, we are partnering with our Boy Scouts group to host a food booth at the Crystal Frolic this year, selling ice cream. We are looking for volunteers to help work at that booth. So if you can uh, sign up to help with one of those shifts that runs from July 25th through 28th, there's a link in your bulletin to sign up for that. Uh, and then coming up later this summer is a wildfire outing to a Saints game. That's happening on August 11th. Uh, there's info in your bulletin about signing up for that. Basically, you, as I understand it, need to call Faith Violet Way Lutheran Church. They're handling the ticketing for this event. Uh, but the deadline for signing up for that is this Thursday, July 11th. So if you're going to sign up, do it this week. All right, I think that's all I have as far as announcements go. So let us now center ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship by turning to the confession and forgiveness printed in our bulletin. <clears throat> we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your wisdom. Turn us again to where else can we go? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn, number 579 in the red hymnal. Please stand as you are able.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
a reading from Ezekiel. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to, with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. Whether they, they, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Holy wisdom, holy words. A reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelation. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Holy wisdom, holy word. We prepare to hear the gospel by singing the gospel verse as noted in your bullet. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the last sentence before our gospel reading today. This is what Jesus had just done before leaving that place and coming to his hometown of Nazareth with his disciples following behind him. That one sentence is the end of the story of Jesus healing the synagogue leader Jairus' daughter, or rather bringing her back to life, back from the dead. That was the gospel passage for last Sunday, and I bring it up not just for context, though that is important, but I also bring it up for two reasons. First, Jesus clearly has a lot of power, considerable power. He just brought a dead girl back to life just before this story that we heard today, which in comparison to what he is able to do in his hometown of Nazareth is extraordinary. And second, that story of Jair, or Jesus bringing Jairus' daughter back to life ends the same way as any number of other healing stories in Mark's Gospel. It ends with Jesus instructing everyone to keep quiet about what he has just done. He tells anybody who has witnessed this healing, any healing, including the one who has been healed, to not tell anybody. Be silent. Just, just let it be. No one should know this. Mum's the word. Now this phenomenon of Jesus healing somebody and then telling everybody to be quiet about it is not a new thing. It's called by scholars the messianic secret. And it happens a number of times in Mark's gospel. It's very common in Mark's gospel. It's thought to be a uniquely Markan thing, though it does appear a bit in Matthew and Luke because Matthew and Luke plagiarized Mark. <laughs> Copied, whatever. Scholars have debated why Jesus does this so often. Why does he want people to be quiet about these miracles he's performing? Does he just not want the publicity? Is he worried people will try to prop him up as some sort of a king? Is he not ready for everything to happen quite yet? And he's worried that once word gets out, things are going to speed up and everything's going to happen much quicker than he is prepared for it to happen. His time has not yet come, as Jesus has been known to say. We don't really know what the reason is, but I feel like this story that we hear today gives us a bit of a clue. It raises a possibility for why Jesus employs this messianic secret why he wants to keep it a secret that he can do these amazing healing miracles. 
So Jesus has just come from doing probably his most impressive miracle. If any of them is going to catch the attention of people, get some publicity, it is this one. He's raised a girl from the dead. His next step, as it turns out, is to go to his hometown of Nazareth. Now, Nazareth is a small village where everybody likely knows Jesus, or at least knows who Jesus is. And when he gets to Nazareth after this impressive show of ability, the most impressive thing he's done so far in the story, bringing a girl back from the dead, Jesus encounters in his hometown people, his neighbors, those he grew up with, he encounters in them unbelief. Jesus encounters a people who are wondering who this guy thinks he is. Jesus encounters people he has known since childhood who just can't understand what Jesus might be trying to prove here. Isn't this Mary's kid? Isn't this the carpenter? We know his brothers and sisters. They still live here. We saw Jesus grow up. He is nothing impressive. He's just a carpenter's son. Notice they don't even mention Joseph. Actually, they don't call him a carpenter's son. They just call him a carpenter. Joseph doesn't get mentioned at all. Now, either that is because Joseph is already dead by this point in the story. Possible. Or because the people remember the rumors. The rumors roughly 30 years earlier. The rumors that this Jesus, born of Mary, was an illegitimate child. If you've ever spent any time in a small town, you know that 30 years is nothing when it comes to a rumor like that. (laughs) They would have still been talking about it. So it's possible that that there's a little dig there. Mary's kid, not Mary and Joseph's kid. Maybe it's Joseph's kid, maybe it's not. We don't know. Or it's possible it's both. Joseph might be dead at this point, and they still remember the rumors. In any case, the people of Nazareth are not impressed with Jesus. And all Jesus has done so far is return and do some teaching. But then facing this criticism and this unbelief from his neighbors, Jesus discovers something interesting. He can't perform his usual miracles in Nazareth. He can't perform the miracles he's used to performing. He could do no deed of power there, Mark tells us. Though, interestingly, he adds this little bit like, well, he could do a little bit. He could heal a few people, presumably of minor afflictions. He could do the little things. But certainly he wasn't raising anyone from the dead in Nazareth. And it was all because the people of Nazareth, his neighbors, didn't believe. Now, the very next thing Jesus does after experiencing this unbelief is he leaves. He gets out of there. Now, the second part of the story what happens after he leaves might seem unrelated to the first part. They kind of seem like two separate stories stuck together. But I think it actually is related. Jesus experiences unbelief and not being able to use his powers among his neighbors in Nazareth. Then he leaves, and the first thing he does is he sends out his disciples. He sends them out two by two, and he gives them authority over the unclean spirits. He gives them the power to do the thing that he was just unable to do. By the end of the story, the disciples are doing it. They are casting out demons. They're healing the sick. But the interesting thing about that is that this is what the disciples were called to do from the very beginning. I had forgotten that. When Jesus names his 12 disciples in the third chapter of Mark, when he calls these 12 to be his disciples, Mark tells us specifically what this calling is about. Mark tells us Jesus appointed the twelve to be with him and to be sent out to preach and to have authority to cast out demons, to have authority to heal. I would have thought that the reason Jesus calls the disciples is simply to be disciples, to be followers, to be students, to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to watch him do his thing, to observe his miracles, his actions, to learn from Jesus as he shared his divine wisdom with them. That's usually what a disciple's role was. 
But that isn't their primary role, as it turns out. From the very beginning, from the moment Jesus calls them, their primary role is to go out and to do this work, to do this healing that Jesus has begun, to go out and participate in the kingdom of God that Jesus has come to introduce. So here's where this connects with the Messianic secret that I mentioned earlier. The Messianic secret is this idea that Jesus doesn't want anyone to know what he's doing. But I think the reason Jesus doesn't want anyone to know what he's doing is that he doesn't want people to think that he is the only one who can do it. He doesn't want people to think that he is the only one who has this kind of power, who can provide this healing that the world so desperately needs. Jesus has not come to declare himself the Messiah and the only one who can bring healing to the world. Instead, Jesus wants to redirect this message and this healing away from himself and to his followers. Jesus has come to bring about the kingdom of God so that all of us can participate in this work of healing. We are all invited to participate in it. We are all called to participate in it. The mistake that the disciples make, and that probably we make as well, is thinking that this is all up to Jesus. Just believe in Jesus, just follow Jesus, and we're all good. But that's just, that's just the first step. Just as the disciples were called from the start to join in this movement of healing in their world, we are also called to be a part of that movement in ours. To follow Jesus is not just about sitting at his feet, listening and learning from him. It's not just about watching Jesus do his thing. Instead, following Jesus is about joining him. It's about bringing that healing that he initiated to a hurting, broken world today. And if that's true, then the point of Jesus is not being able to the, then the point of Jesus not being able to perform miracles in his hometown is not simply about a prophet not being without honor, except in his hometown, as Jesus says. It's about Jesus passing the torch. It's about Jesus making clear that this work needs to be done and the disciples are the ones that have to do it. The disciples are the ones who are called to do it. We are the ones who are called to do it. Jesus knew he wasn't going to be around forever, but he knew that his, his disciples in some shape or form would be. This ministry would continue. This mission would continue. And it does. It continues with you and me. It continues today with Jesus passing this calling on to us. We are the ones now who are sent out to preach and with authority to cast out demons. What that means for us is that we are called to bring hope and healing to the oppressed and broken. Our calling is not simply about sitting here listening to the word of God. It's about making that word of God come to life in the lives of our neighbors. It's about showing the world that there is more. There is life in the midst of death. There is hope in the midst of suffering. And right now, we are the ones who are called to share that life and to share that hope with the world. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. Glorious God, you bend down to wash the feet of your disciples. Let the servant church arise in our teaching, our praying, our healing, and our doing. Make all your faithful people powerful in weakness and strong in grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, your fingers trace the heavens and your hands mold the earth. Where there is drought, bring nourishing rain. Where there is devastation from fire or flood, bring relief. Sustain the well-being of every living thing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you speak and the nations listen. Open those who govern to cries of all who journey with no food or shelter, particularly people fleeing violence, those seeking freedom, and those in search of community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your embrace brings wholeness to those who are troubled. Anoint Deb Michelson, Diane Ranke, Barbara Johnson, Jan Moan, and all who suffer in any way with the oil of healing and grant them a renewal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcoming God, in your presence, strangers become companions and enemies become neighbors. Open our doors to those who have so easily sh we have so easily shut out, particularly people who are different from us or who are marginalized by church or society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you gather us into your house of many dwelling places. We give you thanks for our faithful departed. Inspire us by their lives of faith until with them we rest forever at our journey's end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of that peace with one another. We continue with the offering. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the 
starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Hold for sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, won't you come on down? Oh, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, won't you come on down? Oh, fathers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, won't you come on down? Oh, mothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, won't you come on down? Oh, sinners, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. We sing together our offertory response printed in our bulletin. Please stand as you are able. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated. A few words of instruction before we begin. Uh, For those of you worshiping with us from home, you are invited to share communion with each other in your home. If you are worshiping at home by yourself, you are welcome to take communion now, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of us here in the sanctuary, we'll be coming, you'll come forward at the direction of the ushers via the center aisle, take an empty cup in the center, and then we will gather around the uh, communion rails. You do not need to kneel, but if your needs do not allow that, that's fine, but you are welcome to kneel if you choose. Uh, If you need gluten-free bread, you can pick that up on the way up. And if you need or prefer grape juice instead of wine, pick up a pre-filled cup of grape juice instead of the empty cup. All right, all are welcome.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the light of God surround us, the love of God enfold us, and the presence of God watch over and protect us. For wherever we are, our God is also there. We close as we began in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our mission hymn, number 576. Please stand as you are able. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.